Hi everybody, continuing the lab tour, let's have a look at the general purpose equipment that gets used for most lab experiments that the students do. We do have a lot of uh, other specialized equipment in some of our other lab rooms like, like network analyzers and spectrum analyzers and big beefy power supplies, but for the most part, everything the students use is in these four cabinets. We got scopes and function generators and power supplies and multimeters. So let's have a look at scopes first. It's all digital scopes in here and uh, mostly the MSO, Tektronics MSO 2012 with uh, two analog channels and 16 channel digital input. We just bought these a whole bunch from a few years ago, a couple years ago. And then there's these older TDS 3012Bs, which we've had since 2002. Now, a couple of things to note here is that you see each one only has two analog channels, not four. And that's because we want the students here to, to uh, not be spoiled by four channels. They, they need to do everything they can do with just using two channels and do the the math function of course if they want to have uh, the difference between two voltages across a certain component in their circuit learn all the ins and outs of how to use this kind of equipment and another thing to note is that with the newer scopes we have this, this nice convenient USB port here for saving data on the USB thumb drive but the older scopes only have the the floppy disk drive in there. And so when the students use these things, it's always a struggle to save the screenshot and um, put that onto their onto a computer so they can put it into their lab report or whatever. Now they do have an ethernet port, of course, so we can hook it up to a computer that way and then upload the image from the scope to the computer and then the students can save their image on the computer and of course on this one too it has USB so you can certainly hook up that to a computer too but it's just much more convenient to be able to plug your USB thumb drive straight into here and save the image now I do know that there exists floppy drive USB, USB floppy drive emulators and I could put one into each one of these scopes but I didn't even know that they existed until about a year ago so if I had known about it when they were new and fresh on the market, I certainly could have bought a whole bunch of them and fitted all of our old scopes with them, but probably not much point now because most of the scopes in here are the new Tektronics MSO 2012s. It's only, it's only on rare occasions when the students will be using the, the older digital scopes. Over here in the function generator cabinet, Got a nice mix of uh, analogs, analogs down the bottom, and then these are also analog with digital display. And we got these Agilent's up here, Agilent 33220A and Agilent 33120A, and these GW Instex right here, and uh, some good old HP 3311s. And down here we've got all the logic probes, the 16-channel logic probes and connectors for the MSO scopes over there. And also some National Instruments USB interface modules here. Another thing I keep in here is spare fuses for these Agilent 33120s because um, probably once or twice a semester I have to replace one of the 50-ohm or one of the fuses on the, the 50 ohm output somehow that gets blown I guess students mistakenly hook up their 15 volt power supply to it or something like that somehow the fuse gets blown once or twice a semester and so I gotta pop it open and solder on a new fuse onto the circuit board and the power supply cabinet we got all these oldie but goodie analog power supplies in here 
Up here we got these HP 6216Cs. These are very nice condition with uh, voltage and also variable current limiting so they could be used as current sources. And then we've got some other ones here. They've seen better days but these HP uh, 6215As they still work very nicely. Plus we got the the dual variable supplies, the HP 6205B. And on this shelf is all of our digital logic stuff. Here I converted a bunch of switching power supply wall warts into just regular 5 volt power supplies that the students can use for the digital logic lab. And I even included a little LED right there inside LED and resistor just to light up so that the students can see when it's actually putting out 5 volts and if it's not then either it's not plugged in or the terminals are short circuited. These things are fully short circuited, fully short circuit protected or as I like to call student proof. And we got logic probes, TTL data books, some extra logic probe stuff there. And down here we got the fixed plus minus 15 volt supply. Some of them have a, a 5 volt output as well. And some of the larger variable supplies here that can put out a good 1.5 amps or so. Now I did put in a request to get some, some nice new Agilent digital power supplies to replace all these old and crusty HPs. So when we get the money for it, then hopefully we will have some new toys to play with. And then over here in the multimeter cabinet, we got these real nice six and a half digit Keithley 2000s and a bunch of Fluke 189s and Fluke uh, 87 fives that I bought recently about a year ago I think I got these and back in 2005 or 2006 when I first started working here that's when I bought these and a bunch of uh, leads and stuff of course for them and then up here we got some Keithy 169 digital multimeter with I think one and a, or a three and a half digit multimeter manual range select and all that and you might be wondering why do we have these old crusty Keithley 169s when there's all these fancy flukes and Keithley 2000s to be used and that's because very often these things suit certain functions just well like if a student just needs to check to make sure that they have their plus minus 15 volt rails on their op amp in an otherwise AC lab experiment then that's when they use them. Same thing for these old HP 3311As. These old analog things with very limited functionality. It just has the frequency. We got three different functions and DC offset and amplitude. And then there's a 600 ohm output and a, a TTL pulse output as well. And these things are most commonly used for the digital logic lab where if all you need is a one kilohertz square wave clock signal then these things will suit the, suit the bill just fine. But of course if you want sinusoids and sawtooth waves or you want to do AM modulation or anything like that then of course you'd be using one of the fancy new digital ones up here. Another thing you may be wondering is why do we have all these widely varying and great multitude of equipment here with everything that's either analog or digital, old or new, manual or automatic. And why don't we have just one scope, one function generator, one power supply, and one multimeter bolted to the lab workbenches? Well, that's so the students can get the experience of using all these different kinds of equipment. Because once they get out into the workforce, or at least at this point, there's really no telling what kind of equipment they would be using once they get out, once they get a job and get out into the workforce. They might use digital scopes like this. 
they might use the latest and greatest hundred thousand dollar Tektronix 7000 series whatever or they might use old analog scopes as a matter of fact one of our teachers one of our faculty here um, teaches the students how to use analog scopes in one of our courses so that's always very good that the students get a wide experience of all the different kinds of equipment that are available for them to use anyway when it comes time to get things set up for a lab what I typically do is I take you know however many scopes I need for however many um, student groups that there are working and I put it on these on this bright orange metal cart and then I got these other plastic carts here depending on how many student groups there are you know I might need one or two perhaps one cart full of function generators and power supplies and then another cart with multimeters and maybe some parts too I might go over there into the, the self-service section and get some parts for the students um, usually I just do that for the for the newer students coming in who don't really know anything about electrical engineering yet and so I and so they they are given the parts but once they learn about all the parts and resistor color code and all that stuff then they are responsible for getting their own parts over there then I just take these carts full of equipment across the hall into this room this is our general this is our general electrical engineering lab room and it's the only room that we have that's got no specialized equipment whatsoever why is my camera not focusing anyway you can see just a bunch of nice nice wood tabletops got computers of course on each one but other than that there's the uh, breadboarding wire box right here and we got curve tracer right here Tektronix 576 curve tracer and I put another scope on top of it just to look at the at the steps being applied to, to the base or the gate of transistor or whatever is getting hooked up down here we got some little circuit testers right here like for 741 op amp and for the 2N 2222 and in this cabinet right here That's the analog scopes, Tektronix 2235, and a box full of probes for the scopes, and that's it. This lab room is whatever you make of it, depending on what kind of equipment you put in here, that's what kind of lab it is.